The Story of Snow, The Science of Winter's Wonder, by Mark Cassini with John Nelson, Ph.D. For Pam, M.C. To Yasuko for helping me with this book. From you, I learned much, and hope your efforts mean that our kids, Shizuho and Asaki, appreciate seeing their names mentioned here. J.N. Our story starts on a winter day, high up in the sky, in a cloud that is very, very cold. This is the story of snow. Snow begins with a speck. Clouds are mostly made of air and water, but there are also bits of other things, like tiny particles of dirt, ash, and salt. Even living bacteria can float in the wind and end up in a cloud. A snow crystal needs one of these specks to start growing. The speck becomes the center of a snow crystal. When a speck gets cold enough, water vapor will stick to it. If you had a microscope that could see such small things, here is what you would see. Water vapor sticks to the cold speck, making the speck wet. More water vapor sticks to the wet speck, forming a water droplet. The droplet freezes into a ball of ice. More water vapor sticks to the ball of ice, and it grows into a hexagon-shaped ice crystal. Water vapor continues to stick to the crystal. Faster growth on the corners causes six branches to sprout. The branches keep growing, sprouting little arms of their own, and a beautiful snow crystal is born. A snow crystal forms as it falls. As the snow crystal gets bigger and heavier, it starts to fall to earth. It keeps growing as it falls through its cloud, taking on its own special shape. The shape depends on how wet the cold is and how cold it is. A snow crystal can start to grow one way, but then grow another way when it passes through a wetter or colder part of its cloud. The crystal stops growing soon after falling below the clouds. Snow crystals can be stars. One common snow crystal shape is the star. Star-shaped snow crystals usually have six arms reaching out from a center point. The center point is the home of the speck that started the crystal. The six arms look alike, but they are almost never exactly alike. Snow crystals can be plates. Plate crystals are thin like star crystals, but they don't have arms. The simplest kind of plate is a hexagon with six straight sides. More complicated plates have points where arms almost grew. Snow crystals can also be columns. Column-shaped snow crystals are shaped like pencils. They're not flat like stars and plates. Columns can form high in the clouds and at very cold temperatures. They are very tiny, and when they fall, they make for very slippery snow. Six is the magic number for snow crystals. This is because of the nature of water. Water molecules, the smallest unit of water, attach themselves into groups of six, which usually leads to crystals with six arms or six sides. Snow crystals are rarely perfect. So much can happen during a snow crystal's fall to earth, it is rare that one will turn out perfectly. If a droplet of water passes close to one arm of a snow crystal, that arm can start to grow faster. Before long, that one arm will be a lot longer than the others. A snow crystal can be a twin. A snow crystal can have 12 arms. This is a twin crystal, which happens when two crystals start from the original speck and form on top of each other. A snow crystal can have bumps. If there are enough water droplets near the crystal, some can strike the crystal and freeze on contact. This gives the crystal little bumps called rime. Many snow crystals make one snowflake. Often, snow crystals bump into each other and get stuck together. When this happens, snowflakes form. Hundreds or even thousands of snow crystals can be found in a single snowflake. Once a snow crystal lands, 
it starts to wither away. Snow crystals can't keep growing after they fall from the clouds, and when a crystal stops growing, it immediately starts to wither. Soon, the arms of the crystal break down, and the crystal's shape becomes rounded. This means that if you want to see a snow crystal, you need to catch it in the air, or find it very soon after it lands. Are no two snow crystals alike? Some simple plate crystals may appear exactly alike, as seen through a high-quality microscope. When it comes to more complicated snow crystals, though, odds are that no two are exactly alike. But then, no two leaves, flowers, or people are exactly alike either. Snow crystals, snow crystals are like us. We're each different, but we have a lot in common. How to catch your own snow crystals. Get ready. Get these things ready so you have them next time it snows. A piece of dark cardboard or foam core board. It should be about the size of this book. Make sure that the cardboard is stiff enough to stay flat when you hold it by one edge. A magnifying glass so you can see the snow crystals better. Now, wait until it snows! During a snowfall, put the cardboard or foam core outside for at least 10 minutes before catching snow. It needs to be cold or else the snow will melt right after landing. Make sure the board stays cold and dry. Gripping the board by one edge, hold the board out flat and watch as the snow lands on it. If it is snowing hard, step under a porch roof or some other shelter so less snow falls on the board. Otherwise, the board will fill up with snow. Look at the smaller bits of snow that land on the board. This is where you will find the individual snow crystals. Use the magnifying glass to look at them closely. Once you have looked at the snow, shake off the board and try again. In the right kind of snowstorm, you should be able to see many individual snow crystals. A snow crystal is a letter from the sky. Ukichiro Nakaya, a Japanese scientist. That was The Story of Snow. The Science of Winter's Wonder by Mark Casino with John Nelson, PhD. And this is EDU Kids Space. Subscribe for more stories, books, and lessons. And if there's something in particular you'd like to learn about, leave us a message in the comments. You can also buy this book with the link in the comments. I mean, in the video description.